hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel from this video we will start a tutorial series on c++ standard template library uh, and the short abbreviation for that is c++ stl uh, now before starting the uh, stl we will first take a look at what are the templates why we use them how to use them and what are the problems that can arise if you if we do not use templates uh, to demonstrate that i will first show you an example uh, let's suppose we want a function that will uh, accept two element and will compare them and uh, will return us the greater one so let's write a code for that in let's name this function as max it will accept true parameter that send in y then it will return us the greater one Let's write the code in our side inside of our main function. So let's we just print out the result directly, or we can yes print out C out. Now we'll call our max and we'll pass 10 and 20 as an argument now let's run this program oh, I forgot to save it Let's try again. So you can see our input greater number is 10 because 10 is greater than y. Uh, now here's a scenario. What if we I want to send an let's say float, not the integer. Now let's try this. So you can see it has returned as 10 but it was 10.5 it has neglected the decimal and the integer after, after that decimal point so it is not our desired result now let's suppose if we want to compare two characters let's say a and b so now we want to check which one is greater so let's run this program so let's see what's our so you can see it has written a sum or 98 but we was trying to compare these two character a and b so now you have two scenarios first you can define these as let's say uh, define one for integer one for character one for uh, double one for float or does or you can use the templates and not templates basically was made to solve these kind of problem to make function more reusable to make a function generic so now we will see some definition and the basic structure of template a template is a simple yet very powerful tool in c++ the simple idea is to pass 
data type as a parameter now uh, usually we pass the variable as a parameter but in case of template we also pass the data type of that variable because our function is now generic uh, so that we do not need to write some same code for different type of data for example a software company may need a sort for different data type now sort uh, is a generic function which can accept any uh, type of data and will sort it out rather than writing the uh, rather than writing and maintaining multiple codes uh, we can write one sort and pass data type as parameter c++ adds two new keywords to support templates now our first keyword is template and our second keyword is type name by the way we can replace this uh, type name with the keyword class it's your choice now we will take a look how actually this template works templates are expanded at compile time so it's a very important point to note that it will expand at compile time not the runtime just like macros but there is a different that the compiler does type change before the template expansion uh, we will see the example of that too the idea is simple source codes contain only function and classes but compiled code may contain multiple copies of the same function or classes so here is our basic structure of template we have our template keyword followed by type name we can replace this type name with class keyword then we have our you can say it is a user defined let's say data type uh, and then uh, we will call uh, this function like that now you will notice that in uh, traditional function call we first define the uh, data type here then we give the function name then we give the data type of the parameter but now we are only defining this t so uh, now let's move to main to see how this code will work at compile time so now we are sending two parameters of integer type you can see here we have to define the type we are calling our uh, template function and def also defining the data type with the parameter list 3 and 4 now compiler internally generates and adds below code at compile time as it is an integer type so compiler will add this integer and this is a character type so compiler will add this character data type uh, we write a generic function that can be used for different data types for example now some example of generic functions are sort max min and print array we will see them when uh, we will uh, go to a practical example of uh, stl uh, now coming back to our previous code now we will change this code into a template and make it a generic function for that i will first type the template followed by let's say class empty now i will change this data type with t Uh, now at the function call I will define the data type let's say in character now I will run this program again to see now if it, it is working or not so you can see it has done us B uh, now let's change it to something Involving number, let's say integer. Now run it again. Oh, sorry, I have to change the data type to 
So you can see it was working for character is working for integer now let's try float so you can see it is working for float too now we will see another example of this template now this time we will create a, a generic function that will bubble sort an array in ascending order so let's start that code let me just clear previous code now we are good to go Now this uh, algorithm for bubble sort will contain a nested for loop. So let me write our first loop. this j will be equal to n minus 1 and will less than j and then our decrement now time for our condition Index of j is less than a at the index of j minus 1 then we will call our generic swap function so our template function is ready now it's time for our main code I will just simply define an array of 5 of integer type and will initialize its value let's say 10 50 30 uh, sorry 30 40 and 20 uh, now let's define and which will be equal to the size of our this array a array now it's time to call for our bubble sort template function type to integer and then we'll pass our two argument first one will be our array and second one will be the number size of array now after the execution of this bubble sort function our this array will be sorted now so now let's write a code for displaying our sorted array Our traditional loop 
for loop method for displaying the uh, elements of tray until i is less than length of array then i plus plus So we are good to go, now the moment of the truth, I will uh, run this program, so run our program, let me try again, so yes. I was missing this piece of code uh, size of this array we have to divide it by the uh, first index to get the actual size of the array so you can see it has sorted our array by using bubble sort algorithm in an ascending order so that's all from today's tutorial thanks for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe our channel take care